Lake Michigan by Daniel Brzezinski. Daniel Brzezinski's Lake Michigan is an elegant and chilling masterpiece of dramatic speech in a tradition of activist political poetry that encompasses works as diverse as Pablo Neruda's Canto General and Peter Dale Scott's Coming to Jakarta, a poem about terror. One of the theses embodied in its multiplicity of voices might be said to be that state-sponsored or state-acquiescent violence creates ghosts. Ghosts who, by continued speaking, come to stand in for the people from whose histories they have been created, people who are therefore never truly dead. Technically brilliant in its use of repetition and variation, leavened with touches of embittered and yet in the end resilient drawness, Lake Michigan is an eloquent book-length howl, a piece of political theater staged in a no-man's land lying somewhere between the surreal and the real. Lake Michigan is a book that is written out of um, great love for Chicago, where I live, um, as well as a sense of, of mourning um, for, the, for the way in which it's um, been ravaged by the dual forces of uh, neoliberal economic policies that have destroyed its public services, including its education system uh, and the healthcare system. Uh, and the teachers are continuing to fight the good fight in Chicago and are, are, are doing a great job to survive. Um, and the other force of uh, racist over-policing. Uh, and so Lake Michigan um, exists at the intersection of, of those two forces. Uh, Lake Michigan, scene 18. The beaches are filled with cages, and the cages are filled with bodies, and the bodies are filled with burdens, and the burdens consume the bodies, and the bodies do not know to whom they owe their life. I drop my body on the sand, and someone tells me to pick it up. I drop to the sand to pick up my body, and someone tells me to steal more hair, to steal more flesh, to steal more bones, to steal more fingers. I tell them I cannot risk contaminating the data. I tell them that if I steal more hair, then the data will not be clean. I tell them I cannot touch my own body out of fear of contaminating the data. I have a virus, I say. I am contagious, I say. No salt in my body, no heat in my blood. The sand is dying slowly. It turns into a wall, and in the wall there is a nook, and in the nook there is light, and in light there is God, and in God there is nothing, and in nothing there is hope, and in hope there is abandonment, and in abandonment there is wound, and in wound there is nation, and in nation there are bones, and in bones there is time, and in time there is light, and in light there are numbers, and numbers are codes, and in codes there are mountains, and in mountains there are bodies searching for bones, and in the mountains there are tunnels, and in the tunnels there is so much festering garbage. The men in uniform take the garbage away, but they have a hard time distinguishing the garbage from the people, so they scoop it all up and carry us into the next morning. And in the next morning, there is a confession. I have put my burdens in the wrong body. I have framed my burdens in the wrong language. I have staked my burdens to the wrong nation. I need medicine to sleep. I need medicine to stop the shrieking in my ears. I need medicine to make the Chicago corpses turn into hydrangeas. I need medicine to make the immigrants turn into butterflies. I need an injection to make the bureaucrats turn into terrorists. It is raining again on Lake Michigan. Some say it is raining bodies, but really it is raining trash. The trash they bomb us with explodes when it lands near our bodies, and our bodies are tornadoes, and the joke turns into a mystery novel about how God keeps his hands from shaking when he is about to destroy the universe. I need my burdens, sing the bodies on the beach. I fight for my burdens, scream the bodies on the beach. I know the blankness of my burdens is a battle for love and country. I know the blankness of my burdens is a coda to the death of the city. I don't know why I can't see the moon anymore. I can't see the stars or the sky anymore. I don't even bother to look up. Thank you.